Welcome, everyone, to the VBC Bible Institute and podcast, and welcome back to our course, A Journey Through the Bible. This is the course where we're taking a journey through the entire Bible, and even though it was designed to be a survey, it's really turned into almost a verse-by-verse study of the entire Bible. I guess that's what it's ultimately going to be. This is going to be the longest Bible Institute in the history of mankind, but you're invited to participate whenever you want to jump in and participate in the VBC Bible Institute. You don't have to do everything. Um, if you don't, I mean, look, this is a Bible Institute slash podcast. So there's a lot of freedom in the way we do things. And so if you ever want to participate, great. Do the assignments, send them to me, newsif at yahoo.com, newsif at yahoo.com. I will look over the assignment. I will I will see. And, and sometimes I will may send some, some hey, look, if you have something specific you want me to look at, let me know. Uh, but if you want to participate, great. Even, even if you don't send me the work, if you just have your own little notebook where you're taking notes and you're doing the work, you're benefiting from it, all right? So the goal is to help you grow in your understanding of God's word in a very in-depth manner. And if you know other people out there who would like to, to participate in a Bible Institute, they don't have to sign up. They don't have to, there's nothing they have to do. They can just jump in and start listening at any time. Then please share the VBC Bible Institute podcast with anyone and everyone. Now I have made a decision. I was going to do another uh, lesson, another lecture in Genesis chapter 14, where I was going to do some teaching on the just war doctrine and on Melchizedek. I was I was going to do that because Genesis chapter 14, we uh, we end with, an, uh, with well, well, not the whole end of chapter 14, but Melchizedek shows up in chapter 14, verse 18. And so I, wa- I wanted to do, and we have the introduction of the idea of a priest because he's a priest and a king. So I was going to do a little teaching on just war doctrine because Genesis 14 starts with the idea of war, all right? So that we were going to talk about war. We were going to do, I was going to uh, take the Bible dictionary and do an, an, uh, read the entry on priest. And then I was going to take the Bible dictionary and do a lecture and kind of an, uh, read the entry on Melchizedek. But I also gave you the, that assignment to do. So instead of doing it for you, I'm going to leave that in your capable hands to, do, to again, do some work on uh, the Just War Doctrine, look up an entry on priest, and then uh, look up, and I gave you specific things to do for Melchizedek. Uh, look those things up. You can go back and review past uh, lectures to get those assignments and, and to work on that. Um, you can let me know if you say, wait, 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 wait. I, I had some questions about chapter 14. Just all you have to do is just email me your questions or your confusion or your doubt, and we'll just throw in a special episode of the Bible Institute, you know, called Q&A, Q&A part one, Q&A part two, even if it be going all the way back to Genesis one or Genesis two or Genesis three. We'll just do a special lecture just answering your questions. So you can do that at any time, newsif at yahoo.com newsif at yahoo.com. And, and again, this Bible Institute is for you, not for me. It's for you. So whatever you need, you let me know and I will, I will produce whatever you need. I will. Uh, so you just let me know. All right. Now we come to Genesis 15 and we're going to do this a little different. All right. And every chapter, you notice every chapter, I'm, I'm not doing the same thing in every chapter. And there's a reason. I could create a formula where I handle each chapter the exact same way, but that would become repetitive and predictable and boring. Each chapter, we're going to do things differently. So you never know what to expect. So hopefully, even though it's this long journey through the Bible, every chapter, you're like, oh, okay, that's that's an interesting way of approaching it. Now, sometimes you may not like it, but it's always going to be different. And I, I hope that that keeps you Invest, you know, invested and interested and uh, willing to uh, to move forward. So here's what your task is in Genesis 15. Are you ready? This is a very simple task. Here we go. Genesis chapter 15, verse one. After these things, circle that, what things? Well, I guess you would go back to the battle and everything that took place and Abra, Abram rescuing Lot, all right? So after these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision saying, Fear not. Fear not. I believe, and if if I am incorrect, you, the student, can correct me. I believe that is the first fear not, 
found in the scriptures. Now, there's a lot of people who make claims that there's a fear not for every day of the year. There's a lot of people who make a lot of claims about that. What I would tell you to do is I would challenge you, look up at how many fear nots you can find in the Bible, all right? Just count them. You don't have to read each one. Just look up the phrase fear fear not in a, a probably blue letter Bible app and just see how many are there? And and then you may want to look at them to go, okay, exactly exactly what are these? Do they do this? Do these fear nots rise to the level of the claim that there is a fear not from God for every day of the year? I, I want you to verify whether that is true or not, because that is that is taught, and I've even heard preachers say there's a fear not in the Bible for every day of the year. You find out if that is true or not true. All right. But this appears to be the first fear not. Now here's what I want you to do. I want you to work Genesis 15 in this way. And you can and, and you you've got to determine if this is a correct or incorrect way in handling the text. Genesis 15 be- begins with the word of God coming to Abram and telling him, fear not. I want you to interpret the rest of Genesis 15 in this way. All right, this is the, inter- I'm going to give you an interpretation to work out and you and then you have to determine if it's a good one or a bad one, all right? Here is your task, right? It's the Bible Institute. You're, you're the student. You have to do the work at times, all right? So here we go. I want you to look at Genesis 15 and I want you to write out an outline of Genesis 15 where the outline is basically you look at the entire chapter as God doing different things to help Abram not fear. In other words, he says, fear not, but he doesn't just, I, I'm, I'm reading, I want you to read the chapter in this way. He's telling Abram, fear not, and then he does very specific things in the chapter, and then you divide those things up as being the things he does to assist Abraham and help Abraham not to fear. Abram, fear not. Boom, here's the first thing God does. Abram, fear not. Here's the second thing God does. Abram, fear not. Here's the third thing. I think there's three things he does to help Abraham. I think there's at least three things he does in Genesis 15 to help Abraham, Abram, I keep wanting to say Abraham, Abram not to fear. All right? I want you to, I want you to, to do that, all right? I want, you're going to outline the chapter, but I think um, you're outlining the chapter is, okay, uh, fear not. Here's the, the, first, the first point of my outline is, number one, here's what God did to help Abraham not to fear, and it goes from verse one to wherever. Here's the second thing he did from verse here to verse here. Here's the third thing he did here to here. Okay, how, and then, then you've got to explain how these things would help Abra, Abram not to fear. And then I, then I want you to answer this question. All right, so so there's your so your first task. Look up the, how many fear nots there are in the Bible to determine if that whole theory is true that there's a fear not for every day of the year. year. Second, I want you to outline Genesis chapter 15 in this way, looking at the entire chapter as being God's God's actions or what God does to help Abraham not to fear. Right. So you outline the chapter and you you identify each thing, and then here's what I want you to do. I want you, you can write a sentence, a paragraph. How significant do you think fear is in hurting your Christian walk? How serious of a danger, I mean, how serious of a threat, how significant of a threat, a danger is fear to you advancing in your spiritual life? Now, in the historical setting, I could give you another assignment, but I won't do that right now, all right? I just want you to answer that from just, you're sitting there, you're looking, thinking about the Christian life. How how significant is the idea of fear, do you think, to you advancing in your spiritual life? How could fear cause you major problems in your spiritual growth? I want you to just write a paragraph. Just, just, there's no wrong answer. There's no right answer. You just thinking out loud, okay, the subject of fear. How serious could fear be? to my spiritual life. Like a lot of times we talk about things that are dangerous to your spiritual life. Sexual sin, usually that's what we always talk about, sexual sin. We could talk about bitterness. Oh, that's dangerous to your spiritual life. But how serious is fear? How serious is fear to one's spiritual life? How how much of a threat is it? 
So I want you to look up fear not. How many times does fear not appear in the Bible? And does it equal that what everyone says that there's a fear not for every day of the year? Find out if that's true or false. Second thing I want you to do is I want you to outline Genesis 15 in a way where it says, God told Abram to fear not, and then here are the things God did in Genesis 15 to help Abram not to fear, right? And make sure you account for the entire chapter, and then write out like a sentence or a paragraph, just basically articulating or thinking out loud about how serious of a threat to your spiritual life is fear. You can even offer an example how fear hurt you spiritually, got you in trouble, all right? Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I could I could think of a situation in my own life now that I'm thinking about it. And it was, I didn't even, I, you know what? I didn't even think about how it was fear. Because fear, now I want, when you think about this, I want you, now that I'm thinking about this, now I'm about ready to start preaching, okay? <laughs> okay, I want you to think about this, all right? And this, see, this is why uh, Bible institutes are good. This is what we're supposed to be doing. We're just sitting around talking about God's word. And here, here's what I want you to think. I, I didn't even think about this until it just hit me. We, we sometimes perceive fear as, oh, I'm, I'm afraid of, you know, I'm, fra- I'm afraid of going outside in the dark because someone's going to hurt me. All right. That, that kind of fear. That we're fear of something bad, but there's, their fear shows up in a lot of different ways, right? You can be uh, so filled with shame that you're afraid of what people will think, that you'll try to cover up that whatever you've done to bring you shame. You'll try to cover it instead of confessing it and dealing with it in a godly manner. And it's fear that keeps you from doing it. Maybe sometimes you're fearful of, uh, of, of being hurt so you don't put yourself out there. And, and, and uh, I mean, just, I, I don't want to give too much away because I want you to write this out, but I just want you to see, I want you to look at fear from every perspective and how fear can be detrimental to one's spiritual life, all right? Your perspective here may be worth worth more than anything I could say, but you've got to really spend some time on this. I, look, the goal is not to finish an assignment. The goal is not to get something on paper. The goal is for you to sit there and really meditate and think about fear. How could this hurt my spiritual life? How has it? I want you to really think about it. There's no right answer. So, so this, the goal here is not to get an assignment done the goal here is for you to really contemplate the possible danger of fear to one's spiritual life. Because obviously after, in fact, if you think about it, it's kind of interesting. Genesis 14 ends with a, a military victory. Lot's been rescued. Melchizedek has shown up. And all of these things. So, so what, why would Abram fear? Is he fearing some kind of reprisal from some of these kings? Is he, what, what is he afraid of? But God thinks that there's a fear there. Clearly, there's a fear present. And God steps in and tells him not to fear. And clearly, that means that that fear could have been detrimental to his spiritual life. It seems to be. I think, I think you, we can imply a lot of that. You, you can draw your own conclusions. But how is fear dangerous to your spiritual life? So there's your assignments. Very easy. Very straightforward. Genesis 15. I, I want to do some teaching, but I will not. There you have it. That's a, that's a short lecture, is it not? 13 minutes. I mean, come on. There you go. You get it. That's a short day in school, right? That's, no, it's, it's only a short. It's short, but we're going to be back in less than 30 minutes or about 30 minutes. And we're going to have a full blown hour lecture on typology. All right. So, so this is just, uh, uh, just to get you started on Genesis 15. So get started, go to work. You can email me your, your work and what you discover. Uh, newsif at yahoo.com newsif at yahoo.com. All right, everyone have a great, uh, well, don't go too far. If you're listening to us live right now, I don't know if there's, I don't know if anyone is currently listening to us live in the VBC Bible Institute. If you are listening to us live, thank you. But uh, we'll be back. Typology 705. Should be a good study. All right, everyone, thank you for listening. Look forward to seeing what you discover and what you, what you find, because sometimes I learn more from you than you learn from me. All right, everyone have a great evening. God bless.